Welcome to my review for Halloween Kills, or should I say, welcome to the 686th review of Halloween Kills that has dropped on YouTube this month. If you don't know me, I'm a massive fan of this series. I have already reviewed all of the other Halloween films on my channel. I've got a playlist devoted entirely to Halloween. This was probably my most anticipated film of 2021. Well, this and Bond. I was really looking forward to it. I will say that the film took so long to come out in the end that I, I did think that my brain started to push back against it at some point earlier this summer and just say, no, enough's enough. I, I can't even think about this film anymore. I'm, I'm just sick of thinking about it. It's been so long now. And also there was a second trailer, which I wasn't very pleased about because I, I just felt that it showed too much. I, I refer to the one where we first saw Myers attacking the fireman. As much as I thought that moment was awesome, about five minutes later, I thought to myself, I feel like I've seen most of the movie now. And now that I ha have actually seen the movie, I I've not changed my mind that they are showing way too much in some of these trailers. It's not just Halloween. It's a lot of other films as well. It is, it is a problem in the industry as far as I'm concerned. So when I finally got around to seeing the movie, I wasn't looking forward to it as much as I feel like I should have been. What didn't help as well is the fact that I left it until the Sunday night to go when it opened on a Wednesday. So I'd had four days to soak in all the mediocre reviews, not just from critics, but from fans as well. So yeah, when I sat down in my cinema seat, it, it was kind of out of a sense of duty in the end rather than excitement. But to my surprise, and I should have known that this would happen, I thought the film was really, really good. The first hour especially is just awesome in this. There are problems towards the end, the last 20, 30 minutes, which is a real shame, and I'll get onto those later in the review, but I enjoyed the film more than I thought I would based on what I'd heard from people. The movie starts with Cameron, a character from the first film, walking along the road, still in drag from the Halloween party that we saw in 2018. There was a woman in the audience somewhere off to the right of me who said, oh, what is he wearing? And I thought to myself, clearly didn't watch the first movie. All the, all the other people in, in the screening should have turned around at that moment and done a Kevin and Perry and gone, blagger! But nobody, nobody laughed though. And actually, on the same subject of my screening, there was a couple in the row in front of me before the movie I'm talking about now. The woman uh, said to her boyfriend, what did you say the name of this film was? And he said, Halloween Kills. And then I couldn't believe what she came out with next. She said, is that Jason? And he went, Michael Myers. And I thought to myself, Jesus Christ, at least you've got nothing invested in the movie, I suppose. Best way to watch a film. To this woman's credit, she did not ask any more questions while the movie was on, but probably she went home none too impressed by what she saw. So certainly in the screening that I went to, there was a mixture of people who wanted to be there and people who just didn't give a shit. I did not take my wife to watch this. I do not take my wife to watch horror films that she has no interest in. I'm perfectly comfortable going to the cinema by myself. The issue of mob justice, the mob mentality is a big theme in this film. The question is asked, is it a bad thing to have a mob when you have someone like Myers running around or is it a dangerous thing? We sort of explored this a little bit in Halloween 4, albeit on a much smaller scale. In that film, there were just like five or six rednecks. In Halloween Kills, it feels like there's at least 100 people at one point swarming through a hospital, desperately trying to get to this guy that they think is Myers, but it's not. And I found that whole sequence really effective. I really felt for this guy. In the equivalent scene in Halloween 4, I think I just giggled when they shot Ted Hollister, but not with the asylum patient in Halloween Kills. I found that stuff really emotional. So when it comes to regurgitated plot points, I thought this was definitely one worth exploring. Not that I would want to see mob stuff in every Halloween film, but given that it's been so long since Halloween 4, I thought it was absolutely fine to be used here. Speaking of using the past as inspiration, I really enjoyed the flashback sequences in this. We get this lovingly recreated Haddonfield from 78. We get to find out what happened to Myers after Loomis shot him off the balcony. At least we're exploring that for the first time in this timeline. 
but I really enjoyed the Myers portrayal in these scenes. It really did feel like the Myers from Carpenter's original and I it sort of changed my position actually in terms of what I want after ends because before watching Halloween Kills I was thinking along the lines of wanting them to go down the route of doing more anthology films maybe give us a break from Myers for a few years give us a chance to digest all the David Gordon Green films but now that I've seen these wonderful flashbacks it, it's kind of made me think wouldn't it be cool if we could get a sequel to the original film but set it a couple of years after that original film give Laurie a chance to go away so we'd have to explain why Jamie Lee's not in it give Loomis a chance to just go off and have a heart attack and die somewhere and then maybe Myers would return in around about 1980 so you would still have the same sort of look and feel the same sort of time period and it would potentially feel like the original film for the first time since the original and if it was successful which it surely would be it could then lead into a whole series of films one of my big worries coming into this is that there would simply be too many kills in halloween kills i thought it might end up being too much of a bloodbath too much of an action horror but my fears were unfounded i mean let's not tell lies there are still a hell of a lot of kills in this film but I don't think they take it too far. There are still plenty of moments of nice stealthy suspense where characters are just kind of creeping around and you're left wondering if Myers is going to pop out. In fact, I'd say out of these two films, Halloween 2018 and this one, this one probably has the best, most suspenseful scene out of, out of both of them. I refer to when Lindsay is running away into the trees and the music sort of dies down a little bit and she... She finds a hiding spot. I was convinced that Myers was going to find her. He sort of looks towards where she is and and then he just carries on walking. And then when he gets onto this bridge shortly afterwards, he glances towards that same spot she's in again. Now, I'm convinced that at least the second time around, he knows that she's there. But by that point, he kind of figures that he might as well just carry on to where he's going and just leave her. Because if he doubles back at that point, she'll surely have a chance to get away. I think if he was going to get her, he had to move towards her when he when he first glanced to his right. But I absolutely love that scene. I, I can't wait to see that one again when, when eventually I get the Blu-ray. I think Lindsay would be ideal to go on and be the lead character in the third film. Imagine how powerful it would then be to go back and watch the original film, knowing that that little girl being babysat by Laurie ends up finishing off Myers 43 years later. I think that would be better than just having Laurie or Alison do it. But I imagine that they'll just leave it up to Jamie Lee and Andy Matichek to take care of business. And I predict that Lindsay will be one of the big names that's polished off in the third act, in the first act of Halloween Ends. As a returning character though, returning actress, she's really good in this. So is Tommy. I, I loved his character in this. And his face at the end when he realises that Michael is supernatural is, again, it's, it's, it's really powerful stuff. I, I like what they do with Marion in this. They, they give her a nice little part, not too much. And I guess my final bit of praise is for the soundtrack and the opening titles. We get those 12 pumpkins. I, I wasn't counting them at the time I was watching the movie, but apparently there are 12. And I think when I think back to all the opening credit sequences over the years in Halloween movies. This might just be one of my favourite and it's made even better by that booming soundtrack that plays over the top of it. That really got me into the mood for the film. If the, the whole soundtrack for Halloween Kills might just become one of my favourite in the series. Carpenter absolutely outdone himself. I think his son helped him out on this one, but isn't it amazing that Carpenter in some degree or another is still injecting magic into this series so long after he did that classic first one. So now for my negatives, and as I hinted earlier, most of these are concerned with the final act. This film was almost perfect for about an hour, and, and then it really drops the ball late on. I've got major issues with the scene where Myers gets trapped in the street by the mob. This could have been a terrific scene, one of the best in the entire series, but they just don't film it very well. I would have liked to have seen a lot more back and forth between Myers and the crowd. You know, Myers gets a hit in, kills somebody, the crowd fight back, Myers gets somebody else, you know, get some good choreography going, make it really exciting. But it's just too one-sided in the beginning when 
the crowd get Myers down on the floor and then when he gets up again it's too one-sided the other way and I don't like how they film the second half of this whole thing the way it gets all dreamlike and Laurie starts talking over it just a massive missed opportunity for me and I also don't like the, the very end when Karen gets killed. I, I just think it was too predictable to off her. You know, if you wanted some shock value, it had to be one of the other women. I think if you'd have done a poll among Halloween fans coming into this film, 95% of them comfortably would have predicted that if one of those main three women were going to be killed, it would be Karen. And what makes it more galling is that in this film, at least, she was probably the best of those three characters. She was really good, and given that she was actually the, the person who got the killing blow on Myers in the street, to then have her killed two minutes later in a different location, it, it just doesn't feel right to me at all. I've got one more little complaint, which isn't actually to do with the final act, which is concerned with the development of the Cameron character. They, they redeem him in this film, and I just would have gone the other way. I would have doubled down on him being an, being, being an arsehole. I would have had it turn out that he was actually seeing that girl who he got caught kissing in the, first, in the first movie. And then we could have had a massive cheer moment when Cameron and his new girlfriend got killed by Myers at some point towards the end of Halloween Kills. That could have been awesome. As it is, his death really didn't have much effect on me at all. Yeah, plus, it was a little bit over elaborate I, I think the people who wrote this film intended that kill to be like one of the really awesome kills in the movie and it, it just didn't really fully work for me right that's the end of my negatives though for the most part it's still a really good film but given where I was with this after two acts I, I can't believe that I, I came out of the, the cinema with a slightly hollow feeling in my stomach that it all wasn't completely right with the film, although I guess we can't fully judge this until we've had Halloween ends and we can look at the full completed jigsaw puzzle, if you like. But for now, let's get to the Bag of Terror and find out what sort of score I'm going to give for this. So I've got one, two, three... Three and a half bloody axes out of five. That's still a really good score. But if you'd have tapped me on the shoulder after an hour of this in the cinema and said, I'm from the future. It turns out you're going to give this film three and a half out of five when you do your review. I would have said, get lost. This is going to be like a four and a half easy. But there we go. That's just the way it is. I'd actually thought about giving it four up until the moment that I started um, doing this video and... When I just got into it and started talking about it, I, I just had to just rein it back a little bit more, give it three and a half. It could still go up to a four with further viewings and once I've been able to see the full picture of the quadrilogy. But for now, it's a three and a half. Until next time, cheerio.